Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, and we are finished doing almost all of them by now. In, if you if you happen to come across a math problem that gives you trouble, and if you wish to wish, if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the math problems from this book, from day number 251 through 400, from 251 through 400. This book, the second edition, happens to contain the exactly the same problem in most cases and appearing on exactly the same page number as it happens as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. In the event that you're interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find all the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Day number 1 through 250. The original solutions tend to be, tend to be a little bit lengthier, they tend to be a little bit more in depth. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions, as you know, are very important part of the exam. They are a big chunk of the exam. They have not gone away. Unfortunately, the newer books do not provide us with sufficient practice problem on quantitative comparison questions. For that reason, from day number 401, we began solving quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now, we are on page number 300 and 75. Let's take, a, let's take a look at it. Page number 375. Problem number 9. Problem number 9 on page number 375. The penultimate problem that we see there. The penultimate problem that we see there on page number 375. Problem number 9. When it appeared in the exam, 65% of the people 65% of people had no trouble with it, 35% missed it. Here's what we're being told. We're being told that 6 is x percent, 6, 6, 6 is x percent of 24. We are told that y is 25% of 96. It should say off here. What we're being asked to compare in column A, X versus column B, Y. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. I insist that you do the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that we will do together. Okay? Here's here's what it says. Six is six. We are told is X percent of 24. Y we are told is 25 percent of 96. X versus Y. Well, here's what's going on. Six, six we know, six we know is one quarter of 24, isn't it? If six is one quarter of 24, then six must be, six is 25%. Six is 25% of 24. Six is 25% of 24, which means x, x here is 25. X here is 25. In the next line, they said that y is 25% of 96. We know, we know that 25%, we know that 25% of 100, we know 25% of 100 is 25. Of course, 25% of 100 is 25, of course. Therefore, 25% of 96, therefore, 25% of 96 has to be something less than 25. What that quantity is, what that quantity exactly happens to be is of no interest to us. We just simply have to understand that this y, whatever it is, it's got to be less than 25 because 25% of exactly 100 is 25, therefore 25% of 96, whatever it is, it's got to be less than 25. Y is something less than 25. Something less than 25 versus 25. 25, of course, is bigger. The answer is A. Number 10. Number 10. What does the word penultimate mean? Penultimate simply means 
second to the last. It's just a very fancy way of saying second to the last. We have come across this word many a times because every time we come to a penultimate problem on the page, that's what I say. This is, we, are, we are about to do the penultimate problem, the second to the last problem. This is a word that we learned long time ago in our vocabulary lessons on day number 11. Vocabulary day 11. In the event that you're interested in improving your vocabulary, in the event that you're motivated enough to get a decent score not only in math but also in the English portion, you need to work on your vocabulary. Just type in GRE vocabulary words day 11 and watch the video where you will learn the word penultimate along with some other useful and good words to know. Uh, for the GRE and for life in general as a matter of fact. Number 10. 77 percent of the people who took the exam had no trouble with it. Three quarter people got it right. We are told that 2 times x plus y we are told is less than 3. We are also told that x is more than 2. We are also told that x is more than 2. What we are being asked to compare what we are being asked to compare is y versus 0. y versus 0. I'll give you 5 seconds to do the problem yourself and then we'll compare your work, okay? It's a very simple, very straightforward problem. Here we go. Since we are told, since we are told that x is more than 2, even though, even though x does not need to be an integer, it doesn't need to be a whole number, but just to keep our life simple, Let's just plug in 3 here. x has to be more than 2. Let's plug in 3 here. So if you plug in 3 here, what we find is that 2 times 3 plus y is less than 3, we are told. 6 plus y is less than 3. That implies that y, whatever it is, has got to be a negative quantity. y would have to be a negative quantity because we have to subtract something from 6 to make it 3. Or rather, uh, this is y. y would have, this is 6, so we have to take, take something away from 6 in order to make it 3. in order to 6. x is more than 2. Of course, because 6 is not less than 3, so this would have to be a negative quantity. We we'll have to... I'm making it too much fuss, I know. For example, if it's 2, then y would have to be negative 8. y would have to be a negative quantity. y is a negative quantity. Versus 0, of course, 0 is more than a negative quantity. The answer is b. I don't know why I'm making so much fuss here. What we have to understand is that y, whatever it is, is a negative quantity. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.